penguins, snowy birds that survive in some of the harshest environments known to man. But not all of them live in a winter wonderland. Meet Africa's only penguin. These bubbly birds are living on top of one of the busiest cities in South Africa, Cape Town. Causing chaos wherever they roam, but with their fragile species under threat, their future is bleak. Oh, buddy. Meet the heroes who've stepped in to help. This penguin was probably bitten around the back of the neck and shaken a little bit. I don't want to, like, hit a blood vessel. This dedicated team are on hand 24-7 in Africa's busiest emergency department for penguins. We're trying absolutely everything. They rescue the weak and desperate. It's not looking good at this point. Hello. Rehab them with lots of TLC. Oh, they just melt my little heart. I just, I love these little guys. To get them back into the wild where they belong. They are going to start a whole new life. This is the story of an extraordinary relationship between penguin and person. At the Penguin a and &E. This rugged and wild coastline on the southwesterly tip of South Africa nurtures one of the cheekiest and most loved animals on Earth, African penguins. One of the smallest of nine species of penguin found in the Southern Hemisphere, what they lack in height, they make up for in spirit. These little birds have attitude. Life's pretty good for these roving Romeos, apart from one thing. They've made their home right on the doorstep of four million people in Cape Town. The two mainland colonies of Boulders Beach and Stony Point are home to some of the largest penguin groupings in South Africa. Here, more than anywhere else, is where penguins and people are coming into conflict. But these plucky little penguins aren't alone. There's a dedicated team of heroes who are trying to keep them safe. Penguin rescuer Romy is one of them, and today she's been called out to an emergency at the penguin colony. This adult was found at boulders by the penguin rangers, and it appears to have swallowed a fishing line. And there's a sinker at the bottom of it. Um, so we'll be giving Natasha our vet a call in a minute, just to let her know that we do have birds on the way, and it'll probably get x-rays first thing. The fear is that this line is attached to a fish hook. There we go. So Romy is heading straight to Penguin A&E. And 40 miles along the coast is where that hospital is. Sankob Seabird Sanctuary is nestled in the shadow of Table Mountain. Okay. Head vet Natasha and her committed team are on the front line of a battle to save penguins. We deal with a lot of emergencies. We can have fractures walk in the door or open wounds. This is one of our birds that we've actually amputated. We have seen in the wild that they cope remarkably well. Anything from pigeons to pelicans, it's insane what can walk in the door. The centre rescues more than 1,500 African penguins each year. Like a human hospital, they have an operating theatre. Heart rate, OK. An intensive care unit. They normally pick this moment to poo all over your clothes. A rehab ward and a nursery. The little chicks, they, they just look at you with their big eyes. They got me. <laughs> They're little soul catchers. Despite the hard work, the job does have its perks. Hello. They are the, the funniest thing. When you're having the worst day in the world, you can just watch these little penguins waddling around. They're hysterical to watch. It's just the excitement. <laughs> With penguin numbers in the wild dropping by more than 90% over the last 100 years, the team have a pretty strong motivation. Penguins are on the brink of extinction, and anything that we can do, we should do. After a two-hour drive, Romy's arrived back at the Penguin Hospital. Vet Natasha and her team are on standby to help the new arrival. There's no time to dwell. The penguin with the fishing line in his mouth needs their help. I just want to see if I can see it in the mouth. Although he looks strong, 
If there's a hook at the end of that line, it could be catastrophic. There's nothing that I can see, so I'm just going to gas him. Make sure you don't pull on this string. The only way to know for sure if there's a hook is to X-ray him, which means putting him to sleep with anaesthetic gas. We don't want him to stress out and pull the string up and then rip through the wall of the stomach. Don't know quite how we're going to get it out yet. X-ray. So I'm just attaching some tape. So this is just to keep it where it is. The X-ray confirms their worst fears. There's a large fish hook. I don't know if it would be better to go down endoscopically and, yeah, and, and then grab the sharp end. Cut. Yeah. Are you going to be able to cut it, though? It's metal. The bird has to be very lucky for it not to have done any damage going down, because even if it's pulled slightly back up the other way, then the fish hook will tear into the lining of the esophagus or tear into the lining of the stomach, and it's, we really don't want that. And what's more dangerous is the location of the hook. It's not where we'd like it to be in the esophagus. It's already made it all the way down to the stomach. Gastrointestinal surgery, so going into the stomach of the bird, the prognosis is pretty poor because as, you, as soon as you go into that intestinal tract, you introduce a lot more infection into that abdomen. But that fish hook has to come out somehow, so vet Natasha has a tough decision to make. the Penguin Hospital in Cape Town, the team's on high alert with an emergency case. There's a penguin with a fish hook in his stomach. We don't want him to pull the string up and then rip through the wall of the stomach. So senior vet Stephen has rushed in to help. Time is of the essence. You know, one doesn't want to wait with these sort of things because the hook can, can migrate um, through the stomach and into the abdomen. And then you get all sorts of complications. You know, you don't really want to open up into the abdomen if you don't have to. And to avoid those worries, he's come up with an ingenious solution that could avoid our penguin going under the knife. Rhiannon, can you think of any metal tubing that's... It doesn't have to be metal, it could be plastic as well. Stephen is going to feed a pipe down our penguin's throat to the hook and bring the whole thing up without damaging the bird. That's so clever. This is just an attempt with a method. I don't know if it's going to work, but... Give it a try. With the penguin asleep, first Stephen tries a rigid pipe, but can't get a hold on the hook. He's not giving up. He uses some ordinary garden hose pipe. Uh, what we're trying to do is to pass the tubing around the, the nylon right down to the hook, and then the, the hook will, will try and just lodge with the tubing and then pull it onto the tubing and then slowly try and pull that back if possible uh, and remove the hook that way. One hook. Oh. That's the hook. Nice <laughs> job, Stephen. The immediate threat is gone, but there's still a risk to our penguin's health. There is a chance that his internal organs are damaged, so we're just going to keep an eye on that. So the next 24 hours will be vital. The team needs to be creative in their rescue attempts. As in the wild, penguins are facing an ever difficult time surviving. This is Stony Point, an hour and a half from the hospital, and it's one of the main homes for African penguins. The birds should be living here in the colony, but every year hundreds of them wander into roads and gardens to make their nests. The hospital support an emergency response team who patrol the streets, looking for injured and lost penguins. Manette and her colleague Culford are on the beat today. Yeah, at Baldas it's quite unique because we have 3,200 penguins um, and each one of them is important. So it's not just about the fact that they're endangered, it's about the fact that they look like little waiters, so that's adorable. Manette and Culford are looking for penguins nesting in dangerous spots in town. 
So since this is a residential area, uh, the penguin has a lot of obstacles to face on the way back to the water every day, which is dogs roaming around, cars driving up and down. And they've already spotted a group of penguins right in the middle of the danger zone. This is next to the main road. Uh, this is where most of our road kills happen. So these guys are in real danger. Because the penguins don't like us very much, the penguin is going to struggle. Um, it's normal, it's a few moments of discomfort for the penguin, but then it's all for the greater good. We caught five penguins on that side of the world. This side, I think we've caught six. So it's 11 penguins in total. And the one that got away. But it's not just a penguin in this bush. Ah, uh, there's an egg. If this egg hatched, it would have no chance of surviving next to the busy road. It's still quite fresh. It hasn't gotten too red and poopy and things like that. So, to ensure our egg survival, it'll now be taken back to the safety of the Penguin Hospital in this mobile incubator, so the team can nurture and hatch it. The penguins will be relocated to the beach, where it's much safer, and they'll happily lay more eggs. We are at the back of our office. This side uh, is the nesting ground and just a bit further is the beach. So we're going to release the penguins here and they're going to have a clean shot of going to the water. Oh, we've got a shy one. It's a great feeling to see them going back into the wild where it's safe, no cars, no dogs. So hopefully they stay this time. At the Penguin Hospital, the rescued egg will be looked after in the chick reading unit in a high-tech incubator. So it does look like a weird little spaceship oven-y type thing. Um, you could probably say it is. I mean, these eggs have been incubated at 36 and a half degrees, which is actually really, really high temperature. And yeah, I suppose after 40, 40 days, they come out the oven and you've got a little chick. Every year, the team at the Penguin Hospital raise hundreds of chicks rescued from danger. The aim is to get them safely to around three months of age and then release them back to the wild. This morning, Vet Natasha is joining rehabber Dylan in one of the fluffier and cuter areas of the hospital, the chick nursery. In the wild, penguin chicks stay with their parents for up to four months. So these little guys are completely reliant on the staff for their every need. But that doesn't mean 24-7 cuddling. It's very tempting for um, new volunteers or new interns to want to cuddle and pet them and stroke them because they are so cute. And even I found it tempting, but it's not in the bird's best interest. And if they become tame, we're unable to release them. So this is our nursery check. Um, we check their chests, have a listen, see if there's any crackles or wheezes or anything there shouldn't be. Um, so we can decide what treatment to put them on. They've got a very important little penguin to see today. All of the chicks you see down here, they're all abandoned, they're all from the wild. However, we have one special bird, a hatchling, that hatched here at Sandcob. The little hatchling, called Peanut, is feeling a bit poorly today. Better be healthy. He's still coughing when I pick yes. him up and handle him. Penguin chicks can go downhill quickly with a chest infection, so Natasha has been keeping a close eye on little Peanut. I'm just listening over the chest. Unfortunately, with him, he, he sounded a bit harsh. Luckily, the hospital have a nifty bit of kit that will help Peanut breathe easier, a penguin steam room. We put them in a nebulizer, which pumps a vapor into it. The vapor consists of saline and a mild disinfectant solution. It clears out their lungs and they just breathe so much better afterwards. Seven minutes later, Peanut is already feeling the benefits. Like, this guy's been coughing all morning. He's quietened down quite a bit now. 
And because the staff can't cuddle the chicks, they delegate that duty to some very important helpers. So we put one in each crate. Each penguin loves to cuddle with these guys. They really see comfort in them. It reduces stress levels and it keeps them cosy at the end of every day. So he is on treatment and he is responding to it, which is great. That puts a smile on my face, seeing them actually sounding so much more better. While our chicks rest up with their furry foster parents, come, 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 come. Marna is in home pen with some of the permanent penguins that live at the hospital. And unlike the releasable birds they look after, these guys are very much hands-on. OK, so this one next to me is Skipper. The one trying to vie for attention is Princess. And as the name sounds, she is a bit of a princess in here. If she doesn't get the attention, then nobody's allowed to get the attention. Princess, stop it. The Cindy Crawford of home pen. Yes, you are. When Princess and Skipper were rescued and brought to the hospital, it was clear to staff that they'd been tamed. These two that are around me at the moment will never be released, basically because they have imprinted. Imprinting basically implies that the bird now associates food and love to the person and not to another penguin anymore. <coughs> Obviously, if you were to release a penguin like that into the wild, they wouldn't be able to survive because the natural instinct for them now is to go find a person to feed them, not to go find the fish in the ocean. So once the imprinting happens, it's very difficult to reverse it and sometimes even impossible. And they just want attention. They just want to feel loved. Hey, Skipper. It's 7 a.m. at the Penguin Hospital, and one guest is already up and about. Our fishhook penguin, who's now called Bandit, is looking better, but he's not best pleased to be here. So he's already backing himself into a corner, so he's facing me head on, getting ready to bite. The head movement that he's doing is a, it's a show of aggression. I suppose trying to intimidate me, so I'm going to come off second best. <laughs> But Romy's going to have to get close to Bandit. She's got to tube vital medicine into his stomach in case there's damage from the hook. He already nipped me yesterday and he was half asleep, so um, it is going to be a bit of a tricky one. He's going to give me a, a good old run for my money. He's going to probably flip a slap, bite. Um, but that's, that's fine. I don't mind. It just shows me that he's a nice, strong wild penguin, and that's what we want. I'm going to pick him up now. He's going to bite me, but it's all right. His reaction may look extreme, but Bandit is completely wild, so Romy uses her expertise to pick him up safely. Look at slapping and biting. All right, let's try this again. This will be the first time that I'm actually going to be tubing the bird and giving some fluids into his stomach. Romy's not going to give Bandit any solid food yet until they're sure his stomach is OK. Another happy camper. <laughs> Obviously, it's really foreign. It's the first time they've been restrained and something is getting stuck down his throat um, while he's awake. But hopefully, once we get other penguins in there with him, he might calm down a bit. Unfortunately for the other penguins, our little fighter is still in a bad mood. So Romy tries the one thing she knows penguins love. Here. <laughs> and it seems to be working. He took to the water like a penguin should take to the water. Hopefully he'll get used to routine and all the handling, and then it'll just make our life easier and obviously a lot easier for the bird. Time will tell if this little bruiser will be OK. South Africa has some of the richest fishing waters right in the penguins' backyard, and it's forced man and nature into direct competition. Unfortunately, it's a fight the penguins are losing, with hundreds injured each year. Rehabber Marna has been called out to an emergency at Stony Point Penguin Colony, 60 miles from the hospital. Park ranger Yvonne has found the latest casualty. This one was not found in the colony. It was about a half kilometre on the beach, uh, very dehydrated. 
Dehydration can kill a penguin in minutes. It's quite important that I actually get these birds back. It's a hot day and obviously in the afternoon the back of the bucky will get quite hotter as the day goes on. I think they love you now. Back at the hospital, Marna's taken our penguin straight in to see Vet Bronwyn. He's got an injury to his right flipper. OK. He looks extremely thin, so Rhiannon puts him straight onto the scale. You're very skinny. 1.84. Sure, so that is 1.84 centimetres. Yeah. Not a good weight. This penguin should be more than twice that weight. He's very, very underweight. Okay, oof, you can see, look how thin. If you look here, there's the keel bone over here, which is the, basically like the sternum in, in, a, in a human. In most penguins, you actually wouldn't even be able to feel it, and here you can actually see it. Um, and you can see from here, he's lost a lot of weight, which in this guy generally means that he's actually started digesting his own muscle to, to make enough energy just to live. So basically, this is a starvation case, this bird. Bronwyn quickly discovers why this little guy could be so thin. OK, so there's also um, tiny wounds around the around this wing, so it's quite likely that he was caught in some fishing gut. The old fishing line injury appears to have damaged his flippers. Yeah, these are kind of fundamental for their swimming, and they can't actually hunt without them. So if they have any injuries to their flippers, they won't, they won't get in the water and they won't swim, and they will just waste away. If he hadn't have been picked up and brought in today, um, there's a very good chance that this guy actually wouldn't have made it in the wild on his own. But Bronman finds something that puts him in immediate danger. OK, so when you pinch here, you can see it normally goes down more quickly. Because he hasn't been able to hunt, he's also dangerously dehydrated. So Bronman decides to administer emergency treatment. It's basically um, fluids um, that has certain electrolytes in it at a higher concentration so that it gets absorbed into the body more effectively. We generally save it for the birds that are very dehydrated. And we're going to inject it under the skin, and that way it absorbs a lot quicker into the, into the body. So hopefully within the next two to three hours, um, this fluid will start absorbing into the cells directly and make them feel a lot better. The next 24 hours for that bird is going to be very, very important. Um, it is an ICU, so it'll be closely monitored. It'll be, its hydration will be kept under control. There is a big risk that he is too dehydrated and it's going to be too intense for him to actually recover in the next few days, but hopefully he'll be fine. Stony Point near Cape Town is home to more than 6,000 cheeky and inquisitive African penguins, 60 miles from tourist hotspot Boulders Beach. But it's also right next door to a whole town full of people and their four-legged friends. It's a dangerous mix and its latest victim has been rushed here to the Penguin Hospital for emergency treatment. Vet Natasha and the team are dealing with a seriously injured penguin. He's been bitten around the head by a dog. Knowing dogs and the way they play with their toys, they'll often pick up their toy and then give it a little shake. So the chances are this penguin was probably bitten around the back of the neck and shaken a little bit before he could be brought to us. When he came in, he was unable to move. He had his head completely down towards his chest. Um, he seemed like he was in a lot of pain and he had three puncture wounds on his head. There's still a little bit of swelling remaining and there's quite a lot of swelling around the eyes. That worries me. Rehabbers Rhiannon and Ense are cleaning his wound so Natasha can take a better look at what's going on below. We just want to x-ray him just to have a a good look at all the bones underneath and make sure nothing was damaged. So we are going to give him a little bit of gas so he doesn't wiggle too much when he's under. He's not overly feisty, but we just don't want him to stress out and bang his head. That's fine. With our penguins safely coming round, Natasha has a clear view of his skull and the first signs are good. 
So here you can see his skull that we x-rayed. He was lying on his side when we x-rayed him. Um, you can see his head and his neck here. From what I can tell from the x-rays at this point, I can't see an obvious fracture. What I'm concerned about is where the spine joins with the skull. As this hospital is one of the few places in the world x-raying African penguins, there isn't a wealth of images of healthy penguins for Natasha to judge it against. To get a good comparison at this angle, we're going to need to have a look at um, one of our home pen birds and x-ray our home pen bird in exactly the same position. So resident penguin Winston, who's healthy and strong, has reluctantly volunteered. Although he's not the most willing participant, <laughs> he is contributing greatly to our framework of normal x-rays. Give me the body and you take the head. The x-ray procedure is completely painless and he'll get a nice fish when he wakes up. X-ray. It's time to see if our penguin with the dog bite has any serious damage. So on the initial x-ray, the area that I was concerned about is here. Um, the distance just seems a little bit too much for me. But his head was in a very flexed position. So when we x-rayed Winston, you can still see that that gap exists, but because Winston's head isn't flexed, it's not the same distance. So at this point in time, and considering that our dog bite penguin doesn't have any neurological signs, I'm not worried about his spine at this point in time. Moving forward, we're just giving him supportive care and slowly starting to increase his activity, start to increase his swims and see how he does. I think he'll be fine, <laughs> but I don't want to jinx it. I feel like I've had a few cases in the past that I've said, oh, they're going to be absolutely fine. And then they've died overnight and I'm just left completely stumped. <laughs> so it's rest and TLC for now. <laughs> Over in the nursery, Dylan is checking in with an old friend, Peanut, the hatchling with the chest infection. Like this guy's been coughing all morning. He's now three months old and isn't so little anymore. This bird was on death's bed at one stage. It wasn't looking too good. The medications and all the nebulizing has helped. The bird's sounding great and it's actually very close to being released. Peanut has lost his fluffy baby feathers and has a new waterproof coat, which means he can swim. When African penguins are first born, they have a fluffy coat of feathers, which offers them no protection from the water. At around three months, they develop a juvenile coat of feathers, like Peanut, which gives them the nickname Blues. This coat gives them protection in the cold waters of the Atlantic. At around a year, the blue coat molts and, after a few weeks, they have their adult feathers called, of course, a tuxedo. And for Peanut, today's a big day. He's one step closer to seeing the ocean for the very first time. The bird is swimming wonderfully. It's quite pleasurable to watch, funny to watch almost. Because of Peanut's progress, head rehabber Nikki will be assessing whether he's ready to be released. OK, good, thanks. He meets all the release criteria, which is he must have good feather quality, meaning he's 100% waterproof. Um, he must be 2.6 kilograms, and his bloods must be completely cleared by the vet as well. That chick sounds a tiny bit chesty, but it's, not, it's nothing to keep him back for, so he'll be released in about two days' time. So that's great news that he can go this week. So, Peanut's journey at the Penguin Hospital is almost at an end. It's been four days since our underweight penguin arrived at the hospital. Okay, oof, you can see, look how thin. If you look here, there's the keel bone. So basically, this is a starvation case. He's now called Marvin, and today, vet Natasha is checking on his progress. So, we're just checking for the hydration of the bird. It's definitely not as bad as it was when he first came in. He's much stronger and he's put on a lot of weight when he came in. He was 1.84 kilograms and now he's 2.5. Give it uh, a 
few weeks, maybe a few months, and he'll molt, and then he'll be back out in the wild. With Marvin's flippers also starting to recover, he's on the home street. So Natasha has a treat for him that she knows he's going to enjoy. All our birds love swimming. It's the, the best thing in the world. It would be a great step in his rehab process if he took a little swim for us now. himself a good wash. He's enjoying the swim. Marvin will be at the hospital until his flippers are 100% and then he'll be released. Five days ago, Bandit came into the Penguin Hospital with a life-threatening fish hook stuck in his stomach. After some ingenious surgery by the team, he was saved. One hook. Nice job, Stephen. <laughs> but they weren't sure if the hook had caused damage. Today, vet Natasha is checking on Bandit's progress. We've just really been watching to see if there's any bacterial infection from any penetration of that hook. Today, I'm hoping that he's still looking really strong, that he's swimming well, that he's still as feisty as he was when he came in. What I don't want to see is suddenly a really quiet, lethargic penguin, a completely changed character, because that would indicate to me that there's something more going on. Luckily, Bandit is just as stroppy as ever. So his chest sounds great, his hydration is fine. As far as I'm aware, he's a very strong bird. He's taking his formula well, he's very feisty and he's swimming well, so he can carry on on his way to release. In fact, Bandit is getting a reputation with the staff here and it's not a good one. Oh, little... He's literally like a tank. Is this muscle? So he's really strong. And he's now eating whole fish. And the fingers of the rehab staff. A lot of people have got cuts and bruises. So I'll take this as a love back. So hopefully it's the last one before he's released. And I'm definitely sure there's going to be a lot of happy faces when this bird goes back into the wild. <laughs> And today's one step closer to that. Rehabber Marna is going to assess whether his physical condition is good enough for release. Yeah, so he's picking up quite a good fight already. Considering that he did have a fish hook in his stomach about a week ago, and considering that we had to push a quite a big white pipe down his throat a week ago as well, he is doing very well. OK, so as I'm working my thumb through his feathers, I'm looking to see what the down underneath the feathers look like. It's looking beautiful and soft, and I can't see the skin at all, which is exactly what I want to see. African penguins, like their cold weather cousins, have a thick coat of feathers that make them waterproof in the ocean. It needs constant preening to maintain, and penguins can spend hours every day making sure their feathers are tip-top. Without this incredible coat, they wouldn't be able to hunt for the fish they survive on and would quickly starve to death. But for Bandit, the news is good. Body condition so far is looking good. His feathers are perfect. He's beautiful. Can't find a single problem. So he's passed. Not that he's appreciative. Yeah. Maybe they're grateful really deep inside. It's been a couple of days since our penguin, bitten by the dog, was rushed into the hospital. The team have named him Nipper, but since he's been here, he hasn't shown signs of improvement. He's been quite out of it recently, so he's not... His eyes aren't fully open, he's not standing particularly well or walking around with much um, sense of what's going on. So today, Ensi is giving Nipper some time in the pool to see if it helps. Penguins usually spend 75% of their time in the water, so he should enjoy this. But suddenly, Nipper seems to lose consciousness. This is unusual, because he's putting his head in the pool. 
Long I'm just afraid he might drown. NC takes him straight to vet Natasha. He swum and he's not been such a good swimmer, so he has maybe dunked his head and struggled quite a bit. And that's probably largely to do with the head wound and the swelling around the head. He going to hold his head too tight. So we're looking at the facial symmetry to see if one side of the head is more swollen than the other. Natasha's concerned that pressure in Nipper's head may be causing his unsteady behaviour. He still looks a little bit lethargic, a little bit sleepy, but there is still some swelling around that head that we're still trying to bring down. He has survived to this point, which is great, but he is probably not picking up as quickly as we'd want him to. For Nipper, the future is looking far from certain. At the Penguin Hospital in Cape Town, Vet Natasha is determined to get to the bottom of a medical mystery with one of her patients, Nipper. He's been unsteady on his feet after being attacked around his head. So this little one is our dog bite penguin. So we're just anaesthetizing him just so we can have a better look at that wound. The concern is just there being any pus collecting there, so hard pus. Natasha suspects that it's this hard pus that's causing pressure in Nipper's head and making him dizzy. It's quite gross. It's quite, um, it can collect and form quite large sections and they can't then break it down. Before Natasha checks the puncture wounds, she wants to make sure his ears are OK. They do get ear infections. It's just a hole, so they don't have a, a flap like you do or like dogs do. Nipper's ear looks healthy, unlike the wounds in his scalp. So it's this tiny little puncture wound here that seems to be discharging. So all our, um, our flushing and everything like that has not managed to kind of contain the infection. So I'm just trying to take out a little bit of the, the pus and the dead tissue that's sitting in here. Yummy. Well, that top one looks good. While Natasha finishes up, she's feeling confident about this little guy's chances. In the long term, this um, procedure should relieve quite a lot of the pressure that was in the area and make him a lot more comfortable and help him on his way to recovery. So he's starting to react a little bit now, so we'll take the tube out. And he's going to say, what she done to my head? It really hurts. It's worth the effort, and he is a lovely penguin. A lovely penguin. Oh, yes. the Penguin Hospital, the day is just getting going, and Romy is enjoying the calm before the storm. So it's nice and early in the morning here in Tableview. Um, it's our penguin release day, which is very exciting. We've got 27 penguins up for release. Um, so they've had their last swim at Sand Cub, they've had the last breakfast, and we are going to start boxing them. It's going to be a new and exciting adventure for them getting released onto the beach and putting, getting put back into the wild. And there are two special penguins included today. Getting his first taste of the big wide world is Peanut. He was born here at the hospital. It's always a, a good feeling being able to, to hatch an egg and then follow it through all the way to release. The final step before Peanut leaves is getting his identity tag removed. The cutting the tags off, I think, is a very psychological feeling of release. I think we enjoy just as much as the penguin does. Also getting his marching papers today is Bandit, the fish hook penguin. He's looking great. He's really feisty. That's the challenge holding him. Chest OK, good for release. In here. Oh, congrats. The next view they see will be Boulders Beach Penguin Colony on the other side of Cape Town. While Peanut and Bandit make their way to freedom, Nipper's also having a good morning. He's feeling much better. Go on, yeah, buddy. And unfortunately for Marna, that means getting bitey. So he's trying to bite me, which is nice. 
his appetite is back too. The previous time I fed him, he didn't want to open his beak at all, so this is already a definite improvement. Overall, I think he's doing brilliantly. He's got a good appetite. His weight is maintaining, so it's not dropping weight technically. He's taking his fluids well, and he's actually starting to fight you when you're picking him up, which is even better than all the other signs combined. Ow! <laughs> I was on the fleshy part. He's aware of his surroundings, which is what we are trying to make sure of. This is Nipper's first time back in the pool. The last time he went swimming, he almost drowned. But today, it seems he's turned a corner. He's actually swimming like all the other penguins are doing, and while he's swimming, he's trying to wash himself as well. He's also shaking his head in the water, actually getting his head all the way in. It's a brilliant sign, but it's only going to get better from now. Maybe another two, three months here in Rio, then he'll probably be on his way out. It's days like this that Marna lives for. It might not be the longest job I'll ever have, or it might not be the, the easiest job or the most paid job I've ever had, but it's definitely the most rewarding job. And you've got your tough days, and you've got your good days, and it all comes together to make you feel all right, that you're doing something good in the world. All of the hard work here at the Penguin Hospital is focused on getting these little guys back into the wild. So today is a very special day. Yeah, you're excited. Forty miles away at Boulders Beach, and Romy's arrived with her precious cargo. All right, then there's also, I think they're at the back, the adults. Staff and volunteers are taking our penguin straight down to the protected area of the beach, where the rest of the colony live. Just getting ready to set them all up. So we're going to get the adults over to get them in the middle. The plan is to release the penguins together, because their instinct should drive them towards the ocean, and they'll get confidence from each other. OK, you guys hear that? You know the drill. We're going to tip the box on the count of three. Little Peanut is about to get his first view of the big wide world. One, two, three, let's tip. And our little hatchling looks a bit overwhelmed. Just imagining how they must feel right now. There are quite a few of them looking up at the sky for the first time. But confident Bandit is heading straight for the ocean, and he's leading a group of youngsters. They're starting to make their way down onto the beach. Well, we've got our first group that's just hit the ocean for the first time, which is brilliant. It'll be quite an exciting for them to be able to, to ride on the waves and surf in the waves for the first time. But the second group are stuck at the top of the beach and includes a nervous peanut. Uh, we've got our stragglers at the back here that, that still haven't made it yet. Standing in their way are adults who've already claimed their spots and aren't happy to see the newcomers. The adults at Boulders, they, they, they're bullying them a bit. Um, they're getting picked a little bit. Maybe it's a rite of passage. But with determined spirit, it's Peanut who builds up the courage and makes a break for the water, leading the group to safety. About four weeks ago, this little fluff ball, who's now a blue, was going to bed with a, a little teddy bear that we used to give them at night. He's put his big boy pants on now and has gone into the ocean and is, just needs to make it out there. He was the one leading all the birds into the ocean, so that's that. Yeah, that's a yes feeling. It's a fantastic feeling. Next time, a shark attack leaves a penguin fighting for his life. The bird is in a very critical state. 
Abandoned eggs hatch at the hospital. The first couple of days for these chicks is really critical. And love is in the air. That's like a mating thing. You're being very inappropriate.